On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to do a breakdown of the Blonde Vino Mini Jet Filter and talk about how you can get the most out of it. Moment brews and various artists, everything from me to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. This is probably the cheapest home wine mead cider filter available. And that's basically all it does. It's a filter pump. Its function is to filter your wine or mead. I have looked at buying one of these for years now. The price kind of fluctuates between $100 and $150 just for the filter pump itself. And it's a big investment, so I've never pulled the trigger on it until now. And I do want to say that this is not any sort of paid endorsement. I bought this with my own money and I got it on Amazon. A link to buy that will be in the description and it supports the channel. So first, let's take a look at the filter. There are some YouTube videos out there on this. A lot of them seem to be geared towards selling this. And so I wanted to do a video where we just take a look at what it is. So this is your whole unit here. The pump is inside of here and your liquid flows through this part of the pump into the filter and back out. So your pump's here, on off switch is back there. And then there are some plates in here that hold your actual filter pads. The winer mead goes in through here, comes out here, goes in there, this little guy. It flows through the filter pads in here, filtering all the fluff and gunk out of it. And then it comes back out of here into your next vessel, whether that's secondary, tertiary, a keg, whatever. This little spigot right here is for your runoff because this will leak. All wine filters leak in some way and you get a little bit of loss. The way this filter mitigates that is by having this drip tray and it flows back and out. Now I think you're supposed to discard whatever runs out of there, but I just run it right back into the vessel that I'm filtering from and well, it seems to work fine. So these knobs here are what hold your plates down and you kind of want to unscrew them both at the same time and screw them on at the same time so that way they're always kind of the same distance out from this main plate. That plate slides forward and these plates slide out. This one obviously is the one that goes in front because it's got your inlet and your outlet on it and then these hold your filter pads in place and the filter pads just go in between these plates. Once you have three filter pads in there you pull it closed and you tighten it up as tight as you can. It comes with all these hoses that you see over here. This hose is the one that goes from the pump to the inlet right there, that little guy. You know you're likely to end up losing that at some point. And then all these other hoses it comes with. And as you can see, you're probably never gonna get the hoses back into the original box. So just be prepared for these things to be kicking around your brew space. Maybe dedicate a hook to them somewhere, but finagling them back in the box is a real pain. This hose here, this hose here is the one that goes into the vessel that you are pulling from. And it's got this little kind of like filter doodad on the end of it here to keep the larger particles or things out. However, they do recommend that you don't have any particles in there, be that fruit pulp, orange zest, pieces of oak, oak chips, whatever, because it can get in and mess up your pump, I guess, somehow. So you really want it to be mostly clear and have no particulate, even though it's got this little protective factor on there. Then you got this one that comes off of your drip tray and this one that goes to the vessel that you are transferring to. And you'll notice on here that I've got a hose clamp on the end of there. We'll talk about that more in a minute. I would say that setting this thing up and taking it down is actually more of a time investment than filtering itself. This is the type of thing where you're gonna wanna keep towels around just in case there is a leak or a little spurt of wine or mead that comes out of it. And definitely for emptying the drip tray because once you release the pressure on those filter pads, stuff comes out. And keeping a spray bottle of Starzan around like this one, is a really good idea for this because you have a lot of small parts and misting them with Starzan to ensure that you're getting everything sanitized 
is way easier than trying to like dunk stuff in star sand. Now you can dunk the hoses and the filter plates in your bucket of star sand if you need to, but being able to get up inside of there, into the drip tray, all that, this really comes in handy and obviously doesn't come with the kit. Now, another thing to talk about is this doesn't hold a tight seal. So I actually found that using some carpentry or wood clamps like these to put a lot more pressure on your filter plates and filter pads is a good idea and helps prevent leaks and helps prevent loss. Again, these don't come with the kit. For my stuff, I've been using the number one and number two filter pads, sometimes just the number two filter pads if it's relatively clear going into the filter. I don't really see a reason for using the number three filter pads unless you're really, really looking to polish it and if you're looking to try and sterile filter. But otherwise, Maybe running something murky through the number ones and then running it through the number twos is probably gonna give you all the clarity that you want. So the first time I ran this, Anna comes back and she says, how's it going? How's it working? How's it going? Um, I've got a lot of concerns. Oh, okay. <laughs> it looks messy. It is incredibly messy. Is it supposed oh, to be sprayed? Oh, 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 That's new. <laughs> And after doing a lot of reading, that's when I came up with this method. And I've also seen people using C-clamps for it. But the biggest complaint that you'll see online is that the thing leaks. And it leaks because these knobs don't put enough all around pressure on the plates to hold the thing firm. It's just a design flaw in how this thing's built. What it really needs is probably at least one more of these right up here. But that would get in the way of all the other works. So here's how I have used this filter. For one, I keep all of my vessels on the floor and you're gonna need some sterile water to send through the filter before you send any of your brew through it. This just makes sure that the filter pads are wet and carries any debris, any of that paper debris that's in the filter pads out and away from your brew. Now I've found that when I run that first gallon of water through, it comes out crystal clear on the other side. So I have not experienced what they're advising against, but that's what they say the best practices are. Here's the biggest pain in the butt about this thing is I feel like you need several vessels to do this right. You need that gallon of sterile water and something to filter that into. Obviously you need your batch of your brew and a sanitized clean vessel for that to filter into. And then you're also gonna need a small container for your drip hose to catch any of the drips from that filtered water that comes out in that first little bit of your run. They also suggest that you soak the filter pads in some sterile water with a crushed up Campton tablet in it. That gets the filter pads wet at the very beginning and obviously acts as a microbial deterrent. So you've got all of your stuff in place, you've got your filter set Set up. You plug in your hose from the pump to the filter pads. You plug in your hose from the vessel that you're filtering from. You plug in your hose to the drip tray and you plug in your hose that goes to the vessel that you're transferring to. Once you have all those four hoses in place, your filter pads are soaked, put in place, and your clamps are all tightened down, you're ready to filter. You start by filtering that first gallon of water. As that reaches the end, shut off the pump move it into the vessel that you're actually filtering, your, your wine, your mead, your cider, and then turn the pump back on. Once you start to see some of your brew coming out of the filter, you can stop the pump again, remove the hose from your sterile water receptacle, and put it into your sanitized carboy. Now completing the chain from fermentation vessel through the filter, into your secondary vessel and then filter away. I like to set up my filter on top of a cookie sheet that's lined with a towel. So that way, whenever you release the pressure on the filter pads, any of the mead or whatever that's inside of there will drip out onto a towel rather than onto your work surface. Also, I found that the hose that goes into your secondary vessel has a tendency to float. So what I did is I put this hose clamp on here and I clamped it to a stainless steel racking cane, took the plug off the bottom, and that way I can transfer directly from the bottom up in that secondary vessel, thus bypassing the whole floating hose issue that I had initially. So as you can see, I've started to add quite a few of my own parts to this process in order to make this thing function as I needed it to. At the minimum, I would advise the extra racking cane, the extra hose clamp, and the extra wood clamps 
to bend this thing to your will. Overall, once you've got it working, it's a relatively pleasant experience. One other thing I'd notice is that the hose that comes out of your outlet kind of bends and bows, and that creates a space where bubbles of air can form. So you kind of need to hold it up and let the surface tension of your wine or mead break through those bubbles to help prevent any oxidation that might happen at the top of your tube here. It's a weird issue, but just holding it up for a few seconds when the filter starts seems to fix the problem and you can let it go again. So there are some pros. This thing works basically as expected once you've got it all clamped down. For one, you can leave both of your five gallon brew vessels on the floor. You're not gonna lift them up to transfer your wine or mead. And I've sent now five batches through this thing and saved a little taste on both sides. And just anecdotally, I don't taste a difference before and after it has gone through the filter. I only see a difference in clarity. And of course, the biggest benefit is that it filters your wine or mead quickly. So if you're wanting to go to competition or give bottles to friends and you don't know when they're going to drink those bottles, they may sit on the shelf for six months or a year, you are assured that you should be particulate free even after all that time. So in the clarity department, if clarity is important to you, it gives you some peace of mind. But there are also some cons. You're not gonna take a completely murky batch of wine or mead and send it through this thing and have no issues and have wonderfully clear wine or mead on the other end. It's just not gonna happen. It needs to be mostly clear, even if you're gonna use the number one filter pads, because these things will clog up. And when they clog up, you're gonna start to get leaks no matter how much you have that thing cranked down. And speaking of the filter pads, it is a little spendy per batch batch. These filter pads are good for five or six gallons. Each of these packs costs about three dollars if you get a good deal on them. So if you're running it through two cycles, that's six dollars that you're adding to every batch you filter. The setup and takedown is involved. Like I said, you're gonna probably need to budget 45 minutes to an hour at best to set it up, work the thing, do cleanup, all of that. So you do need to understand that it is an investment once you pull this thing out to filter. Also, this is like nitpicky, but the micron sizes of their filters are not marked and and if you Google it, you will find conflicting information about what micron size the different filter pads are. I'm sure there's probably some official source out there that tells you, but information on it is spotty at best, and it sure would be nice if they just put the freaking micron size on the packaging. And lastly, it's ill-advised to bottle off of this thing. So you really wanna run it through the filter and then bottle from that vessel because you may burn out your pump trying to bottle off of this thing. So my hot take on this is that it works fine it is kind of a bummer that you can't take a murky brew through it. So you're gonna have to invest either time or fining agents into clearing your brew enough that you can run it through here. But it does the job that it says it's going to do and it does it at a relatively reasonable cost. So I would say I will use it for specific purposes, but it's not the type of tool that I would use all the time. If you're just focused on clarity, obviously finding agents and time cost way less than $135, plus three to nine dollars added every batch. I think it's a cool tool. I'm happy to now own one. I will use it maybe six or seven times a year and I will be happy with it, I'm sure, when I do that. Now, I've also read of all the other issues that I may run into with this thing. Like apparently some folks have had problems with the pump just burning out on its own, but I can't rate it against any of those anecdotes that I've seen online. I can only rate it from my personal experience and my relatively limited personal experience. But I know a lot of you have asked if I was ever gonna review something like this. And now that I have one, I wanted to put out a video so you can see my experience with it, see some of my praise and some of my gripes about it and kind of understand the costs and risks associated with getting something like this for yourself. Do you wanna filter wine or mead? This is a great option. Do you need to filter wine or mead? Probably not. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any really specific questions about this setup or my modifications to this to get it running up to my spec, please leave a comment. I'll try to answer everything that I see. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at Doing the Most Okay. We've got a website, doingthemost.org. We're on Twitch at Doing the Most Okay. And we've got a Discord server at discord.doingthemost.org. I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up down there. It really helps out the video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll get our notifications on new content. We do a lot of homebrewing content like this here on the Doing the Most channel. Until next time, happy brewing.
and cheers.